So, so let's talk about some of the inbound channels. So again, the, as I mentioned early on, the, the, the basic idea of inbound is, is having customers come to you, so having ways for them to find you. And so here I like to invest more in freer channels than in paid, and I say freer because there's no such thing as a free channel. Um, and the reason for that is that even if you look at things that appear to be free, like you know, tweeting or, or doing social media or even blogging, it takes a huge amount of human capital time to actually write those blog posts, to actually maintain those connections, to like tweet at you know, three o'clock in the afternoon when you should be writing code or should be building building your product. So it does take a lot of attention to like get those those communities or those channels built out. So it's not free, but they definitely are not things you're paying for. So you can justify investing in those if they end up paying for it, paying 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 their way for you. Um, the other thing, of course, is inbound versus outbound. As I mentioned, it's fine to start outbound, but you have to start looking at more of these inbound things. So examples there, so outbound are all the things I listed, but other forms of outbound are doing kind of big trade show events or doing radio ads, TV ads. All of those things are fine, but they, and, and they tend to be more pay channels. And at this stage, you don't quite have customers you know that you may actually build a business around. So if you can find kind of more inbound or cheaper ways to start investing in, it kind of pays off in the long run. And so the, the um, next two points kind of go hand in hand, so I'll cover them together. Um, so typically when I talk to a lot of entrepreneurs, they, you know, what, what they tell me is that interviewing is just a waste of time because I'm building this scalable business. I really need to get to thousands of people. And so just talking to 10 to 20 people is not gonna cut it you know, uh, for, for my product. And so I'm gonna build this automated system where they're gonna come in and they're just gonna sign up and, and, and work through it. And I, I've been building software for many years, and even with all that experience, when I build sign-up pages, inadvertently people people like people don't convert on those sign-up pages. Like not even convert, but they don't follow all the steps through. Like they would get stuck on something very obvious or non-obvious to me, obviously. Um, but but the point with that is that that that, that trying to build these self-serve automated systems is actually quite hard. And so the, if, if you want to maximize your learning, so even if you are building a sign-up flow on a website. What I tend to do with my initial early adopters is actually watch them use the product firsthand, like do a usability testing with them. Even if it's something as simple as signing up to the, to the website and say uploading a few pictures, I wanna see it because inadvertently I found is they'll, they'll run into a stumbling block which I may not have seen before or there's a question which was left unanswered and so those are all ways that you have to do kind of directly face to face versus kind of having it just be automated and wait for wait for that learning to come to you because many times it doesn't. So when when the early adopters even though they may be motivated to help you, everyone is still pressured for time. And so when um, when when things don't quite work, some of them might help to troubleshoot, but most of them don't turn into testers, they just leave or they just don't do anything. And so it's very it's very important to have that have that attitude of being of, of, of being doing more of these interviews face to face, trying to do more of the testing face to face as possible. The other thing of direct versus indirect <clears throat> is one that I also hear a lot is that many entrepreneurs say, well I can't really sell and so I'm really just going to hire a salesperson and have them do the customer development or have them go out and sell this product because that's all I need. I can build a great product and they are the ones who need to go sell. And so there too, the, the, the uh, message there is that in the earlier stages, you know, th that, that would work if you have got a product that actually does have value and does actually work and is, is resonating with customers. So I don't know if there's any salespeople or people with salespeople background in the room, but on any given day, a, a salesperson kind of has higher stamina for, for rejection and can, can typically outsell like an average entrepreneur, not of course every entrepreneur, not every salesperson, but I would say on taking averages, salespeople can outsell um, entrepreneurs provided they have a repeatable sales process but if they don't then it's hard for them to really go out there and kind of think on their feet because they don't quite have that deep vision or deep product knowledge and that's why a lot of the initial channels a lot of the initial selling has to be done preferably by the founders and so it's so the one thing that I will outsource everything in the company uh, but the one thing I will not outsource is the customer learning because that's something that the founders have to be able to, to, to see for themselves. They have to be in the, in the customer interviews. They have to hear the rejections. They have to be able to think on their feet. And as you will see, even in some cases, when you present problems one, two, and three, and none of them resonate, you might have to pull out a fourth problem out of thin air and see if they will actually latch on to that one. And if they do, then all of a sudden you may have something. But if you were just going through a sales process, you would have no sale and you would have no learning. So you have to be able to kind of do these things directly initially and of course, as, as time goes on, you begin to automate more of it. 
and you begin to build more of these indirect channels. And so that's another example of, um, of even the partnerships that I was talking about early on, is that if you don't quite have a compelling value proposition, relying on a big partner to magically sell your product for you is also not going to work. Because if it's not proven, um, one, you're not going to get the attention from the people actually doing the selling. But two, it's just one of those things where it's probably not, not there yet. It's probably not good enough yet. So you have to be there and, and really get it to that stage where it can, in a way, almost sell itself or, or work well enough where, where it can get people um, to, kind of, to kind of realize that. And then the last thing I'd like to talk about channels is, again, one of focus. So I find a lot of startups, especially in the web world, tend to obsess too much over virality. And they like to build these features into their products from day one. And while I, I, I think those are all, I mean, that's, that's obviously a viable ch uh, channel down the road. But I think that it's, it's, it's a kind of a little um, silly and almost a waste of time to start there. So th the, the first objective should be trying to build something that is worth being viral, like what, what is worth being using. And that is a bigger challenge. So more than virality, more than referral, what you're really looking for is retention. Can you actually keep these customers in? And a good kind of brick and mortar an analogy might be if you actually went to a coffee shop and as you were buying the coffee, the, the barista behind the bar just told you, you know, stop right now, pick up your phone and call five of your friends because this coffee is going to be so great, you're going to love it. Um, that's kind of the same thing that we sometimes see in the sign-up flows is as you're signing up for a product and service, you're encouraged to bring all these friends in, but you haven't seen if it's cool, if it's actually good enough yourself. And it's kind of weird that you'd be doing that. So I find that to be a little bit misplaced. Now, obviously, over time, I, I, there's obviously network effects. And the reason they do it is are for those reasons. And if, there is, if, it's, if it's a product that's been out there where people know that there's value in it, then it makes sense to introduce those virality things. But I don't think you want to necessarily start with that. So trying to bring people into, into the party when you don't quite have a party good enough is really not a good idea. Uh, that's, so that, that's kind of the, the, the point of that one. So any questions on some of these inbound channels or? Yeah. Um, one of your slides I saw said people just look at it. Yeah. So how did that work out? How did that came about? How did that work out? Like that's a scalable inbound channel, right? Yes, that actually worked very well. And I'll, I'll say there were, there were kind of a number of reasons for that. So I, I I'll say that the, the, the biggest reason was as I was as I was looking at my traffic for the book, I found that more than two thirds of that traffic was coming from outside the United States. It wasn't even, you know, outside Silicon Valley; it's outside the United States in, in general. Um, and I also found that there were many folks who were in parts of the world that would, would not actually pay twenty dollars for a book. They would rather pay a much smaller amount, or they would rather just pirate the book um, and and not even pay for it at all. And that was already happening. And so, so rather than 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 let that happen, I figured I sh I should get some 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 potential value out of it. And so I started to, to, to experiment with that. And so based on geography, I, I put a pay for tweet option, which again, from a, they're, they're kind of different, different purposes for that. But one of it, of course, is to spread the word out. So in the US and in many of the developed countries, if you actually tweet, I give you a little discount. And many people tweet just for that reason. And so if you look at my Twitter account, it's like 15,000 people tweet the book so far, uh, which helps to get, get the word out. But if you go to a, a, a third world country, for example, and you, all you will be presented is the, with, with the pay for tweet option. You can buy the book, but everyone will pay, for, pay, pay with the tweet. And when they pay, the book is free for them. So for, so for me, the bigger objective of mine was getting the book out as a platform. And if I could help a fellow entrepreneur in the part of the world where they were not either going to buy the book or they were going to just um, pirate the book anyway, I might as well get some social benefit out of it, which is through the tweet. So let's look at the channels that I, I built for Cloudfire. So as I mentioned, there are the outbound and the inbound. So the place I wanted to start with, or I could immediately start with, is just tapping into the friends network, is to go into daycare. And it was very easy to identify uh, parents in there who also had kids and set up a call. Many of them we had met. Birthday parties were a great way to kind of have a conversation about what I was doing. I was not going to interview them during the birthday party, but, but get permission to follow up with them like at a coffee shop later on. So that's how I was able to get to the 20, 30 interviews that I did fairly quickly for, the, for this particular segment. And then over time, some of the other channels we thought we would test would be AdWords, Facebook, and word of mouth, um, because that was something we were hearing a lot. And, th and that list is also something that this is not a kind of set in stone. This is like what you think. And the idea of the, the canvas is that as you're running these experiments, you're coming back and updating them. And so once we ruled out AdWords, we kind of crossed that one out, and we replaced it with new ones as we discovered new channels that we could potentially build there. 
So I'll give you a minute or two to, to kind of jot down some channels for your product, and then we'll move on.